The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the February 23rd, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I were going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you, 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email. Send that one off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic, fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We start our day with a, a mixed bag. The mix goes like this. You got the Dow trading the upside, 135. S&P is now flat. NASDAQ 100 down 81. Russell's off 5. Semi's down 65. Tranny's up 115. Gold's up 12 bucks. Silver's up a penny. Lights Recruit is up a buck. Natural gas down 12 cents. And the 30-year treasury printed out 118.19. That's up 17 ticks. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside, dollar-wise, is Comfort Systems. Comfortable up 9%, 23 bucks. Regenerin, 18 bucks nearly two percent carvana 34 percent 17 bucks there hyatt hotels 11 bucks and block is up 11 that's a 16 percent move the shakers to the downside booking holdings 362 buckaroonies that's a nine percent move mercado libre 231 bucks 12 percent super micro 137 bucks 14 percent micro strategy four percent 30 bucks fox factory holdings down 19 that's a 30 uh, percent move to the downside so we got movers and we've got shakers but let's begin our day by switching and taking Taking a look at the equity future contracts. Let's dive down into the intraday signals out here. We're going to change our screens momentarily. We'll be on those white background screens. You've got multiple time frames. Daily is in up your upper, upper left. And then uh, all the way down to 10 minutes in your lower right. So we just start with the 10-minute uh, time frame chart. Bar number eight that says in the NQ, you could get some type of TD9 count bottom between 1110 and 1130 out there. So you want to watch that. That would suggest a rally up towards the 18,050-ish range. 15-minute time frame chart is not in agreement with that call, nor is the 30-minute time frame chart, nor is the 60-minute time frame chart, nor is the 120-minute time frame chart. So another other area of potential support out here. I would say I'd focus on the five-hour time frame chart. And the reason is because that has that's going to complete a TD9 count top at 2 p.m. Well, bar number nine already completed, so it's got that confirmed pattern. So if we're looking for support to the downside, if the 10-minute time frame chart does not generate a TD9 count bottom, then I would say the next area for the NQ to target would be in that 17909-ish type area out there. That's the oscillator and change line for the five-hour time frame. That's what's going on when we take a look at the NQs. Let's go take a look what's going on inside the ES Mini. It's going to take just a few moments here to populate. While it's doing that, um, oh, you know what we'll do? We'll do the ES Mini. Mr. Bill had a question about the VIX and VIX futures out there and just the VIX in general. So as long as we're at the ES Mini, we're going to stay here. 
and we'll go take a look at that. But we take a look at the ES Mini, upper left-hand side, just uh, in this case, you know, let's do reverse order, since that's what's populated. You got the daily time frame. If it did generate a bearish reversal candle today, and at the present time at 11.10, it's showing up as a shooting star. No idea what it's going to look like at 5 o'clock tonight. But if it were to be a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a Rosemont indicator top. Now, even if it did that, Price is still above profile in the green oscillator and change line, so the condition would even be would be neutral, even with a top out there, because being above resistance, that's just simply bullish. If we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, just like the NQ has a TD9 count top, so too does the five-hour time frame chart for the ES Mini. Now, in this case here, price hasn't even gotten below uh, the prior bar's low out there, so I'll tell you what the price target going to be is 5,075. That's not what I'm telling you is going to be the price target. What? If price does get below the low of the prior bar out there, then I'd say we head to 50.75. But it hasn't done that yet. We've taken out the high of that prior bar out there. So not so sure. The 240-minute time frame chart has got support at 50.84. 120-minute um, chart, this bar completes at noon. Right now, you've got a bearish reversal candle. It could take price back to the 50.73 level. We're at support on a 60-minute time frame. It looks like the 60 and the 30 are going to give us some very good signals here. Those signals being 50, 95, 50. If price closes below that on a 30-minute time frame, we are likely headed lower out there. The 30-minute time frame, it's got both a TD9 count and a Rosemont indicator top. And now the question is, will support hold? I don't know the answer to that, but I would say as we go into perhaps the last segment of the show, we should be able to move back, take a look at some of these charts, and get a bit of an update. So that's what's going on here inside the ES Mini. As I mentioned, Mr. Bill had asked about the spot volatility, future contracts, and so forth. So let's just stick with the theme here of the S&P 500. Let me see. I think I might have opened up some charts for that. Did I? Did I? Yeah, here we go. VIX charts. There we go. So now, with regard to VIX futures, what I've done, and I'm not sure exactly what your question was, uh, Mr. Bill, so I've just kind of taken it and we'll just go here. The number of people like to trade the volatility indexes. It's very difficult to find a great pattern there uh, for folks to trade. Uh, the best one that I have found is you trade UVXY or whatever, whatever the symbol names are. You get down to like a two or three minute time frame chart. You get market profiles and you pay attention to those. That's what I found is a, is a great way. But first, it's important to also understand what's inside the UVXY. It's not the spot. It's not the cash index out or the, the indice out here. It's the futures contracts. And right now it's two future contracts. And you've got to pay attention to that. Sometimes there'll be two sometimes there'll be three maybe there will be one right now the march contract represents 74 percent of the weighting inside of uvxy so don't be paying attention to the spot volatility if you're trading uvxy 26 percent of that weighting is in the april contract and so you'd really want to be paying attention to uh, those with regard to the spot volatility what i have found to be the most reliable although the last week here somebody would have to say as hey, stevie you're reliable is a little bit shaky it's on shaky ground and, that, and that's true and we're going to show you there but here the lower left hand uh, chart out there that blue line is a 50-day exponential moving average and that's really a key area uh, i did some research on this a deck over a decade ago and what i did was I just simply tested all exponential moving averages in the spot volatility index and which moving average did price need to be above or below to give us a uh, um, a great signal on what that meant for the S&P 500. Whew. So that was a mouthful out there. So let's go switch over to those charts. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go take a look at the black background chart. So if you give me a moment, we'll switch over to that set of uh, screens. We will go to this. No, we don't. We've already done. We've already taken a look at that. So here is the spot volatility index at the bottom of the screen. The red line is the 50-day exponential moving average. The green and red rectangle squares, whatever shapes they uh, end up being, show time periods where the spot volatility index is above or below the 50-day exponential moving average. We'll be right back to finish this off. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the spot volatility index. We're taking a look at the 50-day uh, exponential moving average um, for the spot volatility index when price is above or below that level. The green uh, boxes, they represent when the spot volatility index is below the 50-day exponential moving average. So when it's below, um, I like to say that the S&P 500 is likely going to move sideways to higher. When it's above, it's going to move sideways to lower. Well, if you take a look at the last, uh, since uh, February 12th out there, that's when the spot volatility index closed above the 50-day. Actually, we've seen the S&P 500 move higher so it's a divergence for sure but if that spot politics were to close a day below 1390 right now we're at 1417 everything would line up when i say line up line up for a further rally well, this condition remaining here, it just says we should certainly be cautious. Okay, let's go get over to some of the requests that have come in. I don't want to get too far behind on that. We're going to switch back to those white background charts. And the first thing we're going to take a look at is uh, Rivian. So give me a second. We'll get over there. First thing you're going to see here are the equity future contracts. We And, Mr. Bill, I hope that provided you with the information we're looking for. If not, write back to me. Let me know specifically, if you would, what you were looking for, and, uh, and I'll get to uh, that uh, for you. So let's go take a look at uh, Rivian RIVN is the uh, ticker symbol out here this individual is looking for a bottom in Rivian as we take a look at the daily time frame we don't see any kind of a bottom out here no bottom signal bar number three wave number five I don't see a bottom on the weekly time frame. Uh, you're at all-time lows on the monthly time frame I don't see anything here so um, I say uh, stay away from uh, Rivian yeah, I don't see anything. I don't see anything out here. Did this really? Set, did some shares really go off at 180 bucks or so, or was that like a reverse split or something? In any event, no bottom signals out there. Uh, you had another request, which was to take a look at Mobileye. M B L Y is the uh, ticker symbol out there. There, you're looking for a bottom as well. And if we take a look at M B L Y, what we can see is that today is going to become bar number eight of a TD nine count pattern. So this has got some potential for you. In the weekly, it's going to be bar number eight of a TD nine count pattern. 
Now, as I take a look at just simply the daily time frame charts out here, we haven't seen a close above a prior high. Uh, well, quite frankly, we haven't seen it for, for a while. We haven't seen it since uh, February the 9th out there. So you've got Roach momentum indicator signal has been triggered. That needs a bullish reversal candle. Uh, uh, TD9 count, uh, the blow can occur in bars 8, 9, or the bar following 9. Uh, on a weekly basis, I'd say you want to at least get uh, bar number 9. Uh, to uh, form out there. So come back and take a look at this towards the end. We keep monitoring the chart, I would say, um, because you still can, you know, bar number eight on the weekly, you still can get a uh, TD9 count, even if we get a little bit of a rally out there. So between the two, and you'd give me a long list, and uh, I don't have time to, to do all those uh, for you. Uh, but between those two, I would say uh, the one I'd be paying attention would be a mobile MBLY. Um, Hector and Patty wrote in, had a kind of an interesting question out here. And their question was, how does the market perform during um, during the Olympic years out here? So, the, you know, and here's here's our seasonal set of charts. I've got it selected right now for the S&P 500, which uh, the S&P 500, I go back to 1928 as the beginning year. So one of the, uh, I'll just, let me just... Uh, clear this out and then I'll start from the uh, beginning out here. So one of the cool features that uh, the folks at Seasonix provide for us on our seasonal data is we can select whichever years we want. So my recollection, and I didn't get your message uh, until just like about five minutes before the show start. And so at some point in time, so then I have to ask you, uh, Hector and Patty, Summer Olympics or Winter Olympics? So the Olympics used to be every four years, right? But at some point in time in the last couple decades, it started switching to every other year. Right. It was a summer and then winter. Right. So we got the two years. So um, I'd really have to go back and truly study that. But one of your other questions was uh, uh, during Olympic, you, you first came up with Olympics and then Olympic even years. Well, I think all Olympics are on even years. I could be wrong about that. I am probably wrong about that, but I think I might be right about that. Oh, so which one is it, Stevie? I'm not sure, but I think most Olympic years are are even. So what I can do is one of the tools. I'll find. I'll get to it. Don't worry. Just just stick with me. Um, if if I can select even years, so we can take a look at odd years as as one easy shot. Another one would be even years. If I knew which ones to delete here that weren't truly Olympic years on the even ones, I would do that for you, uh, Hector and Patty. But uh, so here is even years just for blanks and giggles out there uh, what we can see is that this tells us during those years we pretty much are in a consolidation pattern up until about the uh, middle of april and then we typically see the market move lower market moves lower into about the uh, middle of june we get a nice little rally into the end of august and then the lows that uh, typically form sometime in october so that's what the even year cycle looks like taking us back to the year 1928 for the s p 500 out there so uh, that's the best that i I can do it doesn't want the events area here so there's also a number of different events that we can choose and under miscellaneous unfortunately it's got super bowls it's got solar eclipses lunar eclipses afc nfc but it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have the olympics out there so with and other than doing a bunch of work which i would do if i had the time I, I just don't have the time so hector and patty i hope that that helps you out let's go take a look at our next request this is coming in from uh, jack inside the tiger's den jack would like to take a look at ticker symbol gct out there and we take a look at gct no idea what it is we don't really know to need to know what it is we're agnostic to what the instruments are we're just following along with the chart pattern. So the chart patterns here, you've got a Rhodes momentum indicator uh, top on the daily time frame. That's basically led to a consolidation, if you will, with inside his profile. And the profile ranges from 2730 up to 3333. Uh, actually, price did spike all the way down to test its breakout level support in the daily time frame. You can see that, Jack, and that was at 22425 out there. So what do we have? We've got just simply consolidation with inside profiles and a daily top. How about in the weekly time frame? The weekly time frame looks to me like if we've got a completed A to B equals CD pattern, let's pull this back a bit. And uh, yeah, hard to say if we really do or not. And the reason why I say that, folks, is because the B point for the A to B equals CD, now what I would do is I'd probably start down here in September. Uh, the B point that I would use would be this candle right here from January 12th of, uh, of this year. The problem is that's also the low. 
There's no lower low that takes place after that high. So, you know, and using the same bar for an A to B equals CD, I, I just don't like doing that out there. It's not basically – not saying that you can't. It's just uh, – so I don't know if there's an A to B completed here to the upside. What we do know is we had price push all the way down, test support. That was that green oscillator and change line on the weekly time frame. So this remains bullish out there. And on the monthly – well, the monthly time frame says that GCT may come to a slowdown here at the end of the month. Why? Because this is the this is going to complete a TD nine count top. So the monthly's got a TD nine count top. The daily's got a consolidation roads momentum indicator top, and the weekly Steve's uncertain of. So it looks to me like I would be watching if the monthly chart starts pulling back. You've got to watch that twenty four twenty five level. If you get a close below that, we probably have some kind of change in trend signal, and then we want to come back to the weekly time frame chart, understand where price is trading in relationship to that oscillator and change line. But you break twenty four twenty five, you probably close below that as well. So seven seven seven. I hope that that provided with the information you're looking for on GCT, which is Giga Cloud Technology. So we come back from this break. We're going to take a look at uh, Berkshire Hathaway, PGR, uh, Las Vegas Sands, I believe, LBS, LRN for Duncan Steve, EKT for Mike and Pennington, and the uh, GDX for Hector and Patty. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, what does Stevie do here? Uh, the, the, the EKO. You know, that's right. It came by email. Just uh, my apology, folks, uh, for the. Uh, uh, nope, that wasn't it. Uh, I just had a request. EKT. Hmm. You know, um, so Mike, Mike, if you're listening, Mike in Pennington, EKT, for some reason, I don't get I don't get anything on that. So uh, if you want to write back uh, to me, that would be great, and I'll try to uh, – yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting that symbol. So there must be a mistype there, but uh, that's okay. So now I just wanted to at least throw that out there. Let me uh, – now, and hopefully Mike is listening. So let's go to our next request, which was uh, take a look at Berkshire Hathaway, BRK, out here. It's uh, bar number seven of a TD9 count, so we don't see any kind of a topping pattern as we speak. There's probably an A to B equals CD, but let's just take a quick peek here. Yeah, there certainly is an A to B equals CD pattern. If we were to generate a bullish reversal candle, that would set, that would generate a sell the D point. So short of that, and you got a gap to the upside out here. So I don't see any kind of a topping signal, at least just yet. The weekly time frame you've entered, bar number eight, Mr. Z, that says you could get a top between this week and the next two. The monthly chart says I don't see any kind of a topping signal here. It just looks like it's all out bullish. So the daily, weekly, and monthly are all in a breakout bullish mode. We say that because prices above pro file resistance in each case and prices trade above green oscillator and change line those are just simply breakout bullish conditions now berkshire hathaway in its dance steps here coming off of the october lows we haven't seen too many pullbacks out here in fact if we take a look at the um well, this is since january there's only been there's been two one day pullbacks and one two day pullback out there and even coming off of the october low from uh, last year um, there was one four-day pullback. So typically pullbacks will last from two to four consecutive sessions. They go beyond four. That's typically telling us about a uh, change in trend or strong momentum move to the downside. I have to say usually nothing – works 100% uh, out here. And the perfect example on Berkshire Bathway, we had six consecutive days of the downside. That was back on August 22nd. I would have suggested we're heading to the downside. Then you get a signal of seven consecutive moves to the upside on September 14th. So how do you read that? I don't I don't know how to read that, to tell you the truth. But right now, we know we are on day number seven to the upside. Uh, any pullbacks or retracements, as long as price continues to hold that oscillator and change on this is the daily time frame, we're looking at that's at 410. Conditions will just simply remain bullish out there. So I got to, everything's bullish out here uh, with regard to Berkshire Hathaway. Now, in a very short term time frame, and what I mean by that is the 30 minute, you've got a Rhodes Mentum indicator padding. Price here is still above profile resistance, so it's somewhat neutralized. But because price is below that green oscillator and change line, it's lost its momentum. If it lost its momentum, well, maybe it wants to really test the next level of support, which on a 30-minute time frame is 415.81 out there. So that's what I see in our review of Berkshire Hathaway. Thank you very much for the request. Our next request coming in from, um, oh, Mr. Z as well. Ticker symbol here is PGR. So let's get PGR up on our screens and see what it is doing. Looks like bar number seven from a daily standpoint. Looks like it's way number seven pattern was negated today i don't see any uh other kind of a uh, top now if there were to be a bull a bearish reversal candle today uh john there would be a roach momentum indicator top but you really also need to see a close below its oscillator and change line and on a daily base that's 190.84 adjust that 84 by a few um if you did see a close below that then this will have lost its momentum and suggest that it's getting ready to retrace uh, back a little bit further on a weekly time frame wave number seven that needs a lower high to confirm that pattern so earliest would be next friday bar number eight uh you could get a, a top that's between this week and two weeks out but we don't have that topping signal on the daily so it doesn't appear to be today as the time frame and the monthly time frame chart says it's got more room to run to the upside so i'd be paying attention to the daily and the weekly right now uh, really the daily knowing that we are in a potential TD9 count wave number seven kind of a uh, top uh, type area out there. But uh, it's not I, I, I'm not saying short this. I'm not saying sell this. What I'm saying is watch it because the chart patterns look pretty good and we know what to look for if something is going to change out there. So I hope that helps you out on those two symbols. And as always, thank you very much for your request out there. We've got a request to take a look at uh, Las Vegas. Vegas Sands, LBS out here. So let's get to that. And uh, 
Hmm. I did not write down who requested that that symbol. Sorry about that, whoever that was. Uh, but if we take a look at Las Vegas Sands, what do we know? What do we know? This negated a TD9 count top uh, last week. It did it on uh, February the 15th, day after Valentine's Day. So that's a positive. And now we've just got a consolidation with inside his profile. Now, there's a new profile for Las Vegas Sands. Formed a couple of days ago. 53.23 is your support level. And 55.05 is the resistance area. No top that I see. Well, let me take, pull this back. Maybe there's a sell the D point pattern. I, I may have spoken too soon. Yeah, there's a sell the D point pattern. I mean, it would look like this. Let me just make sure that it it pretty much completed here. Here's your A to B. I'll just simply move this over to the C point. There we go. Yeah. So this does have a so this this generated a sell the D point pattern that's resulted in a consolidation on the daily time frame for Las Vegas Sands. Uh, so as long as that um, I'd say as long as the low, the current lows hold and what I'm referring to is a low from February 20th and that low out there was 52.62. As long as those lows hold, price wants to go target 58.58. That's the weekly TD9 count breakdown resistance level. It's got to plow through 55. 92 and 5592 is the center of its monthly profile. There's sellers that are located at that area out there. So here's the playbook if you can close above 5592, uh, you are on your way because you will have been you'll be over the top of the daily profile, you will have gotten over the center of that bear structured monthly profile, and the weekly then should take us up to that 58 58 ish area when I take a look at Las Vegas Sands. So, my apology for not writing down who made that request, but I do want to say thank you for doing that. And let's move on to our next one. And that next one is LRN, and LRN is uh, from Duncan Steve. And Duncan and we take a look at LRN on its uh, so on the weekly time frame. That's where I want to start, and the reason is because that generated a road momentum indicator topping pattern last week. Now you could end up with a weekly hammer candle, so that's kind of interesting. Now if you do, the cool thing about a hammer candle, Stevo, is that if price closes below that. The saying goes, the expression goes, if you're long, you're wrong. Now, the cool thing about that is if you did get a close, if it is a hammer candle, I don't know if it is or isn't. You'll need to you know, check back at the, end of the, at the end of the day today. But if it is, and price were to close below 54.81, the cool thing about that is you would know where price is headed to or should be headed to. And that would be the area of 51.29. That's where the bars are located based upon that weekly profile. Now, if, if, if uh, sellers are able to overrun those guys, then they take – Price all the way back to 43.77. That's the TD9 count breakout area. On the daily time frame, what I don't have here is any kind of a bottom signal. Doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed, just means I don't have a bottom signal. And what price is doing, we can see we're trading above yesterday's high, so no reason. So it's bullish certainly today. Should continue to rally. And the question is, what will happen as it rallies up towards 58.31? 5831 happens to be the oscillator and change line. It changed colors four days ago. If price tests and rejects that, that means closes back below it. That says that we continue to head lower out there. So at a weekly time frame, nothing more than what we've already shared with you. Monthly time frame, um, at the end of the month, this could also be a road momentum indicator signal. But as long as on a longer term basis, monthly basis, as long as price remains about 53 and change, right now it's 53.30, conditions are still bullish, meaning you'd have to go to neutral. Bullish sign, but price above profile and its green oscillator and change line to neutralize the overall signal. So, LRN, Stride Inc. out there, likely going to go target 58.31. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, let's, uh, it was IAK is the request from uh, Mike in Pennington. So let's get uh, back to that. And uh, thanks uh, for responding. I see somebody else in the den uh, gave me that as the answer as well. So when we take a look at IAK. Here's what we know. We know that this had a Rhodesmintum indicator top and a TD9 count top. And the high of that pattern was 110.98. Yesterday's close was 110.97. So if we get a close above 110.98 today, we're trading above it. That negates those signals. However, there's a wave number seven signal that's been triggered. Let me open up the daily time frame chart for IAK. See where that one began right there. Okay, so uh, you're going to have uh, that needs a lower high to confirm that top. But right now it's in a bullish breakout mode out there. Your question was take profit or add. Okay, not add. I'm not going to ask you to add at a resistance area. Weekly time frame, you're in bar number nine. It's going to complete a, a weekly TD nine count. And on the uh, monthly time frame chart, you're in bar number eight. So it looks to me like this is getting ready or getting close to a uh, top. Now, I don't have a signal. For example, on a, oh, I take that back. Let me see. I don't have a signal even on the 30 minute time frame chart. The 30 minute time frame chart negated a TD nine count top out there. So take profit or take profit or add. So we've definitely concluded no add. The thing is, I don't know what your long term horizon was and, you know, on this, uh, Mike. So that becomes difficult. You won't get a change in trend. The earliest change in trend signal you get would be two consecutive close below 10902, the bottom of the daily profile out there. And if you got that, then price would take you back to 10607. That might be the extent of it. So um, I do hope that that information helps you make that decision, though. Hector and Patty wrote in, they want to take a look at the GDX. So in the GDX, their question is, what do we need to see in the GDX to get bullish? for its weekly or its monthly time frame out there. You know, and it's a great question. When we take a look at the charts out here, first of all, on the daily time frame chart, you've got a TD9 count bottom. And that TD9 count bottom has led to just simply a consolidation with inside its profile. So we know we've got that there. On the weekly time frame chart, there is no bottom signal. A bottom signal could be a test and rejection of a swing point. And that swing point would be from October the 6th out there. Now, price is still trading with inside that swing point. So we don't have to worry about volume or anything along those lines. What has not been tested is that low of 2562. If that could be tested and rejected on a weekly basis with less than 113 million shares, 
combined with the daily TD9 count, then maybe the weekly chart there, Hector and Patty would be confirming uh, that uh, move. If, on the other hand, price were to close below, and it's still a possibility, 2562 would do with more than 113 million shares, well, what we'd get, we would get a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. On a monthly time frame, there is no pattern out here. There's just price trading with inside this bullish structured monthly profile. So what we do know here, Hector and Patty, is the buy zone on the monthly basis is between 2353 and 2554. Not that it would form a bottoming pattern there, but that's your buy zone based upon the profile. So I would say testing at least that swing point low and rejecting it on the weekly time frame, that would then add to the idea that the weekly has generated some kind of confirming message inside the GDX. But then the real answer there is we need to go take a look at the top 10 holdings, see what they're doing daily and weekly to really get a uh, feel for that. So Hector and Patty, thanks for the uh, question. I hope that that provided you with the information you were looking for. And uh, have a fantastic weekend. The next request coming in from McGuppy. McGuppy is asking a question, is natural gas still bullish? So let's go take a look at the charts and see what the charts have to uh, tell us. We'll be back there momentarily. So here's the natural gas charts out there. We did get that nice little rally yesterday, right when we were doing a review of it, as price was pulling back and making a TD9 count bottom pattern. That worked out pretty good, but now today, not so good. Now, to answer your question, McGuppy, right, is it still a buy? It's still a buy from the standpoint it has still, it still has a buy the D point pattern. The only way that gets negated is a close below the low of the candles that made up that pattern, and that would require a close below 1.633. If price closed below 1.63, Stevie here will bail from his long trade in natural gas. Now, the April contract, that's the active contract. The April contract, at least as of yesterday, exclusively was make, made up the UNG out there. So I've got the two ETFs that you can trade on that, Boyle and the UNG. So it still does have the bottom. But the question is, what's going on in the short term, right? Yesterday, we took a look at a short-term time frame chart. I think it was a 60-minute chart, had a TD9 count bottom. We said, okay, that was the uh, buy. Well, shoot, on a 30-minute time frame chart, you may get a confirmed Roach Mintum indicator bottom in the next uh, 47. So we've got uh, 13 minutes out there. How's that for quick math? Now, what you really need to see here on a 30-minute on a basis, McGuppy, I would say would be a close above that red oscillator and change line. That has capped any kind of counter trend moves at this stage here. So wait to get a close above that on a 30-minute time frame. And then if you do, I don't know if your question was because you're looking to get in or, or, or whatever it might be. Um, uh, but uh, this could be a bottom signal here intraday with regard to natural gas, as on the daily basis was pulling back to test support, which was that red oscillator and change line. The other element here, and the reason why McGuppy's asking why I'm in the trade, why subscribers are in the trade, why maybe you should be in the trade, because here's the seasonal pattern with regard to this is over a 33-year time period. And you can see we've got bottom signals on the daily time frame out here, and we are in the favorable seasonal cycle, and so it's worth a shot out there. Uh, may not work out, but uh, we have all the reasoning uh, to go ahead and take that trade. So I hope that answered your question, McGuppy. Vic wanted to take a look at ticker symbol FWRD. So to do that, I've got to get back to a different set of charts and then actually find it. Like, where did Stevie put that? Did he put it here? He did not. Did he put it here? He did. So now let's take a look at this for Vic. Uh, I believe you took a long position in this. I think you said yesterday, maybe, or today. Well, what you'd love to see today is you'd love to see this candle formation maintain itself. Right now, you've got a bullish piercing in candle. All it has to do is uh, finish halfway into yesterday's bar in order to retain that beer, bullish piercing candle pattern. Why is that important? Because you've got a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal. And that at least could give you a bottom and price would be above that red oscillator and change line. That would suggest that we should rally up towards the 4472 level. Level on FWRD. The weekly time frame, you are in a uh, potential wave number seven bottom, but we got a TD9 count bottom that's going to confirm this week and it will complete next week. So I like what you see. I like what I see on the daily time frame. I like what I see on the weekly time frame. Uh, the monthly time frame looks disgusting. So let's not look at it. Okay, perfect. Now, if we look at a short term time frame chart, this is for Vic on FWRD. You got a nice Roach Mintum indicator bottom as well earlier this morning. This 
Price's suggestion at least to rally up to 4051. So I'd say if you get up close about 4051, you're starting to get out of the woods with FWRD. And to finish this segment off here, Jane wanted to take a look at NVIDIA. Her question was, do we think this might rally further today out here? If we take a look at NVIDIA, we don't have any kind of a topping pattern on the week daily, but on the weekly, you're going to complete a TD9 count top this week. Monthly says, I don't know what top you guys are talking about. We'll have to watch the uh, weekly out here. Now, on a daily time frame, we had uh, price gaps up. I don't have a topping pattern associated. I just have price pulling back and testing support and holding support. And that was at 775.89. Just below that at 772.87, Jane, was another bottom pattern out there. So right now, this looks to me like if at uh, 12 noon, it's 11.50 right now, this can close above its green oscillator and change line at 792.64. The answer to your question would be yes, this should rally further. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So we have seen gold take off just a little bit uh, during the uh, show out there with the U.S. dollar index not really doing much. The U.S. dollar index, I'll just simply expand out the chart. Now, I do have a 10-minute delay on uh, this chart here, but you can see the U.S. dollar index really hasn't done uh, that much today. If we take a look at what gold is doing, again, this is the daily time frame chart, we can see that gold is really trading in between a couple of things. One, it's trading in between a rising and a falling trend line. You can see that price is about to get up towards that uh, falling trend line out there. And price is trading into, uh, it's consolidating with inside its profile. So you really need to see a, a close above 2054.80 to uh, get a potential profile change in trend signal. You need two consecutive closes above that. But we can see that gold is trading into a potential resistance zone for its daily time frame. Now, if we go take a look at the four-hour time frame chart, and we can try to identify where its resistance level is at. We're going to see that that is at its TD9 count breakdown area. So the top of that daily profile, you may have written that down, maybe you didn't. The top of that daily profile is 2054.80. 2051.90 is the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. It looks to me like price is going to go target that as well. So it really boils down to does gold close above 2054.80? If it does, that could be hinting of a change in trend signal. Otherwise, we're just simply, again, testing. Testing support, testing resistance, and and so on. So that's what I see. Oh, what did I? Yeah, we got that chart up there. Good. We got that ten minute chart. Is there anything else here that I need to pay attention to? I don't think so. So let's get to our last request coming in from McGuppy. McGuppy wanted to take a look at Amazon. AMZN is the ticker symbol out there. I didn't have to tell you that. His question is, I think it might have been. Uh, is looking for a long position, and now would not be the time to do that. And the reason that I say that, McGuppy, is because if we look at the daily time frame chart for Amazon, what we're going to see out here is on the trading day of February the 12th, that generated a Roach Mintum indicator top. Now, price is trading into that swing point. That swing point did volume of 51 million shares. You closed into it yesterday with 55 million shares. That said that at least the top should have been tested. And that top was 175.39. The high so far today, 175.75. Volume today is 20 million shares. That's 20 going into 51. So it's going to be close with regard to the volume. You need to see a close above that high, that high being 175.39, in order for this to get its daily mojo back. Folks, thanks so much for being here all week long and certainly on Fantastic Friday. Have a fabulous weekend. I'll look forward to seeing you on Magnificent Monday. Be safe out there. Take care.